up. Stand by for our next instalment in the journey to Oman. Hello, good to see you. Now, this week is a very special week because it is National Bunny Week. So it's going to be one of my favourite weeks of the year. I love bunnies. So we've got a few cute bunnies in the studio and we've all got some of our favourite breeds with us. I have got a lion head rabbit. Now, the reason why it's called lion head is because it's got this fabulous big furry mane. And this is Leo, Leo the lion. Oh, he's really cute. Aww, like a lion. So, so sweet. He does completely. Have you got that call? This little fellow is Carmelo. He's so cute. And he's a lop-eared dwarf rabbit. And he's just so cuddly. I don't ever want to put him down. <laughs> Look at this one then. I tell you, I could put him down because he's uh, she is so big. This is a German giant rabbit and she weighs a massive eight kilograms. No. no. That's heavier than me. Yeah, he's very heavy. Um, this breed hit the headlines last February when record-breaking Herman the German became the biggest bunny in the world. And look at that, he is enormous. He is ginormous, that is a big rabbit. <laughs> now, despite their very cute appearance, rabbits can actually be quite difficult to look after. Now, according to the RSPCA, they are the number one most abandoned and abused pet in the UK. Mm, now, the good news is that this week, hundreds of vet surgeries are offering free rabbit checkups. If you want to get your bunny checked out, click on the link from our website to find the nearest one to you. Also on the website, Tricia, our Blue Peter vet, has posted her guide to keeping rabbits. Check it out. Mm, absolutely. Now, if you think these rabbits look tough to look after, you have seen nothing yet, because recently, Andy and I found ourselves trying to look after 40 goats. On our journey to Oman, Connie and I travelled eight hours around the globe to the tip of the Arabian Peninsula. The centre of Oman is a vast desert wilderness. We were heading straight into the middle of it. Got the wheel. Check. Water. Definitely check. Map. Definitely, definitely check. Headscarf. Yes, definitely. Right. Looks good. Let's do it, let's get out of here. Let's do it, man! This beautiful yet harsh terrain is home to a tribe of people called Bedouin. Bedouin live in the sands, moving from place to place to find food for their animals. We'd been invited to visit a Bedouin lady called Sheikha, who we'd been told lives alone in the middle of the desert. Every sand dune looks pretty much the same. We've got a map here, but uh, I'm not quite sure if we're in the right place. I think, I think there's a turning coming somewhere. Hopefully, Abdullah will get us there. We're here, Andy. Sheikha has lived in the desert all her life. Her nearest neighbours are four dunes away, so she lives here alone. Well, almost. So, uh, this is your family of goats. Do they all have names, Isan? Basically, has a names for them based on their colours. She has one called uh, Lekhali, which means dark brown, and Lekhadr, which means a bit greenish. There looks like there's quite a few that are dark brown to me, but if it works for her, I'm, I'm going to go with it. Oh, oh little this. baby kid. <laughs> so cute. This is a little kid. Ide, what does that mean? Small baby goat. We call it kid. I want to take you back to the studio. We could have a little pet kid. Basically, Ide's mum hasn't got enough milk, so we're going to try and get Ide to drink milk from here. Oh, that's all Ide. Oh, so hungry isn't he? Yeah, thirsty. Yeah, that's your owner. Ide wasn't the only hungry one. <laughs> Look at that. I didn't expect that reaction. Absolutely starving. <laughs> While the goats tucked into their grub, Shaker couldn't wait to show me where she lives. Oh. Home sweet uh, home. OK. All the food is hung up here. So I guess that stops mice and stuff getting in. Rice is in here. This is her wardrobe. And these are like the drawers. And these are verses from the Quran, the holy book. Ah, uh, your bedding. Hung up here is all her bedding. Everything has got its place. It's all tidy and in order. It's compact. I like it, the way she's done it all. Nice house. Bed Zain. I asked Sheka how she keeps in touch with what's happening in the world. I used to have a radio, but it broke. I miss it. I would listen to the news and the calls to prayer every day. Guess you wouldn't hear it in the desert because we're really far away from any mosques. So it's quite important. <laughs> uh, 
Shake has got us doing a bit of a home improvement. We wrote a, a local neighbour jabbering to help us. Oh, terry stuff! Uh. Look at that, the whole wall's coming up. I've been left on goat sitting duty with all the little kids. I've baby sat before, but never goats. They keep escaping out of their pen, the little babies, out of their playpen. And my job is chief baby catcher. His fences are made from deep palm tree leaves. <laughs> <laughs> she says she wants them faced on the inside because if she doesn't look goat too much on them. I'm not doing a pot stone. <laughs> it's good. Basically, Bedouin women wear face masks to uh, protect them from the sun and also preserve modesty. Oh, right, is it that I wore it the wrong way around, obviously? She might cover her face, but like most women, Sheka loves her makeup. It's supposed to make her face smell nice. It feels really cooling and soothing. And this is the saffron now. So this must basically be what's under the old face mask. Oh, no, she spilled some on my white trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see what I look like. I'm assuming I'm red and yellow now. Bus. Bus. Bus finish, that means. Hey, Oh, mirror. OK, I can see the results of the uh, Bedouin makeover. Ah. Here we go. Ah, it's very bold. Not the sort of makeup I'm used to wearing, but interesting. Andy, there you are. Look at you. you know, very different. interesting <laughs> makeup. Do you like it? Yeah, it's not bad. Well, anyway, it's dinner time. It's time to wash up and scrub up. Well, we're in the kitchen right now, aren't we, And Preparing dinner. Andy and I are assisting with the fire. How are you going? Not bad. Just pile up some twigs here. Yeah. And I can see she's raking up something. Yeah, that is actually, get this, it's dried shark meat. Apparently, Bedouins um, eat this a lot because it doesn't need refrigeration. Have a smell. <sighs> That's a bit pongy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Right, stick that in the pot. So, Sheka, have you ever been bitten by a snake or a scorpion or had any dangerous encounters with any creatures of the desert? Is that? I once saw a horn viper. It was really big. <laughs> so I cut it, chop, chop, into two pieces. Oh, be brave. She was telling me a bit earlier that she weaves her own socks at a lamb's hole, which is pretty cool. She calls them scorpion socks, and she believes scorpions are allergic to them, and she keeps them on all night. Let's hope we don't get bitten by any scorpions tonight. With the sharp meat cooked, it was time for the taste test. Oh, me too. It's not sm sort of that fishy at all. It's really mm. subtle. Very, Very good. good. Very good shake. <laughs> Very delicious. <laughs> Shukran. Shukran. Jake has got a favourite sand dune over there, which she likes to sleep on. So we've mm. had a nice spot by the fire, and we've fed her down, and we're all comfy mm. and snuggly. <laughs> good night, Andy. Good night, Con. <clears throat> Con. Mm? You scared of getting bitten by a scorpion? Mm, not with our socks on. Go to sleep. OK. Oh, I've absolutely loved coming here. Mm, it's been so chilled out and nice. Yeah. yeah. Really tranquil, the goats. It's just really cool, so different. Yeah. Miles away from what I know, anyway. Definitely. Hmm. And unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to mm. Sheka now. But, Sheka, we've got you a little present. This is for you. Remember you said your radio broke down? Yeah. This is a solar-powered radio. So you've got lots of sun round here. Shkura, <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>